COVID-19 emergency procedures and the administration of those via remote audio video communication. This deposition of Captain Fernando Morales is being conducted remotely via Zoom. Today's date is May 25th, 2021. The time is approximately 10 o'clock a.m. Uh, Captain Morales, in what city are you located? City of Homestead, Florida. Thank you. The witness is located in Homestead, Florida. My name is Sylvia Evans. I'm located in, my, in Orlando, Florida. I'm administering the oath and reporting this deposition remotely. May I see your ID, please? Yes, ma'am. Let me know if you can see it okay. If not, I'll yes, bring it close. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, would counsel please state your appearance for the record and express your stipulation that the deposition and oath may take place remotely? Dr. James Eric McDonough, the pro se plaintiff, and I agree to the stipulation. Sam is kind of voice Sirota Healthman for the defendant's city of Homestead and the witness, and we stipulate that the deposition and oath can be conducted remotely. Thank you. Captain, raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, stop you got? Yes, I do. Okay. Good morning, Captain. Can you state your full name for the record? Captain Fernando Morales of the Homestead Police Department. And have you uh, given a deposition before, sir? Oh, yes. Okay. R real quick. If for any reason you don't hear or understand my question, please ask me to repeat it and I'll be happy to. And please don't answer a question you don't understand. And please allow me to finish my question before you answer. If you need to take a break at any time or use the bathroom, please let me know and we can pause the deposition. You understand, sir? Yes. Okay, great. Um, real quick before we get started, I just want to know, I've filed notices in my four pending records cases. Some of these questions will be general to all the cases, and I'll also have some questions for the specific cases. If we don't get to specific questions for one or more cases, I'll reserve the right to call you back to finish questions for those cases. I don't think that's going to be an issue, and I'm going to try to avoid that at all costs. Um, so anyway, let's get started. Can uh, you describe your work history? Recording in progress. Uh, can you describe your work history and experience, sir? Oh, wow. We're, we're going to need all day for that. Oh, um, I've been with the Homestead Police Department for 22 years, a little bit over 22 years. Um, I've done everything from patrol work to gangs, narcotics, um, um, public information officer, hostage negotiator. I, I've done a whole slew of things. Uh, unless you want me to go into specifics on any on anyone. That's okay. And, and what's your current duties other than, I, I know you're a captain, but like your assignment or what you do now? Sure. I'm the captain over the Professional Compliance Bureau, which most people know as Internal Affairs. Okay. And how long have you held that position? Um, I believe it was the beginning of 19 or the ending of 18, right around there. Okay. And what did you do uh, immediately before that? Narcotics, narcotics and gang. And do you uh, recall what your position was in 2016, 2015? Um, probably narcotics. Okay. All right. It was either narcotics or the general investigative unit. One, one of the two. Okay. But you're a supervisor now in yes. the whole professional compliance bureau. Okay. As a police officer, are you trained in the proper use of state forms or the report writing systems required to properly document incidents and criminal activity in Homestead? Um, I believe so, the ones that were issued here with the department. Okay. I'd like to understand how the records reporting system works relating to criminal investigations. It's my understanding that the Homestead Police Department uses a paperless report system. Yes, that's a form. Can you describe the basics of entering a report into the public records management system? Like, from, um, from the beginning, as a police officer, you start a case until you send it off to your supervisor. Check the form. You can answer. Hello? Hello? Did you mean I objected to the form, Captain, but if you, if you understood the question, you can answer. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, as soon as the case starts, you open up the, the report in our RMS system, our reporting management system. Um, you complete it. Uh, once you hit the submit button, it goes to your immediate supervisor. 
they then in turn um, approve it or disapprove it. Um, once it's approved, it will go into, um, I'm not too keen on, on the IT portion of it, how, how it works on the back end of the program. But once it's approved, it goes into the general, I guess, um, program, if you will. Okay. No, th th that helps me out a lot. I appreciate that. And when you create a case in the records management system, does it automatically assign a tracking number or case number to that? Uh, no, you input the case number. And, and where do you get the case number from? Uh, you get, I would ask it from dispatch. I'd ask dispatch to provide me the case number for the incident. And then I would enter it into, once the report comes up, it's like, um, let me see if I can explain it so you understand, like a fillable PDF, if you will. Mm -hmm. And then there's a space for case number. You put your case number there. Then it generates the form based okay. on that case number, and then you continue writing your report. Does that make sense? It, it makes sense. No, it, it makes a lot of sense. So I, I think I understand some points where I was misunderstanding. Um, so before you go into the, case, the records management system to start a case, you would contact the dispatcher or somebody to get a case number? Yeah, you'd need a case number in order to, to do it. Okay. And what type of events would trigger someone going to get a case number? Check the phone. Oh, wow. Yeah, r r right there, you, you'd have to be a little bit more specific. Um, you're talking about any crime, and it's if it's a crime, the officer would write it. If it's, it, it kind of like boils down to what I feel, is this something that would need documentation, uh, some sort of documentation. Um, if somebody comes and asks me for direction, let's just say, I wouldn't generate a report for that. Does that make sense? So you're talking about a wide range of oh. things, so you'd have to be a little bit more specific. No, no, you're, you're being excellent, Captain. I really appreciate it. You're, you're, you're doing awesome. Um, so somebody stops you and asks for directions. That doesn't get written up. There's no report for that. A no. crime, I guess, gets a police report and a case number. Yes. And if something was reported that wasn't a crime, but something more than getting directions, like, I'm just going to say hypothetically, a woman calls and says her cat's stuck in the tree. Would there be a non-criminal report that could be pulled for something like that? No, I don't, I don't think so. Okay. No, that, there wouldn't be a, a report for that. Okay. Does... To your knowledge, does the system used by Homestead automatically keep track of all documents, photos, video, miscellaneous attachments with the main report and supplemental reports in an organized fashion? Object to form. Um, um, again, I'm not an IT guy. I, I wouldn't even begin to uh, answer that. I, I really, um, no joke, I'm really not a computer type person. Um, so I, I, I would imagine so, and I'm, and I'm only guessing um, there. That's, that's fine, and I really appreciate and respect that as well. Whenever I have an issue with my computer, I call the IT people and they fix yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not right and we're perfect, but so I'm no, I'll call, I'll call I'll call a 16 or 18 year old. They more, know more about computers than I do. <laughs> me, me as well, sir. Um, so I guess another way I want to ask this is if you were going to look for records and you were given a case number you could put that case number into the computer and all, everything should be there, right? And you put the case number in, the reports, any supplementals, any evidence that was entered into the system would all be together. Would that? Be, yes, in theory, yes. In the, okay. Um, so generally, you can identify everything in a report by searching the case or incident number? Back to form. Um, you, you should be able to. Um, there are, um, I, I, I would say there are some cases that you wouldn't be able to unless they're of sensitive nature or, or it's something that a detective is working on right now. Um, so there are instances where I, if I were to put the case number in there and it doesn't come out, um, that would probably be one of the circumstances and I'm generalizing here. No, I, I, I appreciate that. So some circumstances could be like if it's an IA investigation or maybe a drug that's investigation correct. with confidential informants. It's something that's really sensitive. We need to not let eyes see that shouldn't see. That's, that's correct. Okay. 
Does the department have a policy regarding the use of records management system used for investigative reports? Check the form. Can you repeat that one more time? Sure. Does the department have a policy regarding the use of the records management system used for investigative reports? An objection. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I understand. Um, an investigator has in his, um, you know, slew of things that he can do. Um, if that's what you're asking, he can he can uh, go into uh, a majority of the reports to to read them, to investigate. Is that what, uh, is that what you're asking? I think that's what you're asking. Let me try to rephrase this. Um, is there a policy in Homestead Police Department that requires an officer or investigator to use the records management system? Me meaning, are they required to do this electronically? Are they able to keep notes on paper? Can they keep notes in their Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, yeah, that, that's form. a little bit. No, I, I can write my notes on whatever I want. I mean, uh, I can tell you in my investigative days, I had plenty of, of, of my notes if I'm that type of person. Um, I, I am. I'm old school. I like writing, but some people aren't. Some people want to, you know, go by their report or just read it, and they've got good memory retention. Uh, um, now, again, I'm guessing on all of these. I can only speak for what I would have done in my investigations. Um, uh, I hope that answered your question. No, that, that, that's excellent. And it, it makes sense. Like, you just jot down something on a piece of paper or a quick note. That's probably not a public record. You're going to use that to write a report. But when you use your notes and everything and you write a report, that report would have to go into the records management system. Would that be the policy? Check I would imagine form. so, yeah. Okay. When the Office of Internal Affairs or any investigative division conducts a criminal investigation into anyone, whether an employee or not, is a written report documenting the investigation required? Um, not necessarily. Sometimes I'll, I'll have an inquiry which doesn't have a case number. You know, um, I could I could maybe look into something that it doesn't necessarily um, generate a report. Um, even as a detective, there were many things that um, didn't come down as a crime. I'll give you an example just to clear that up. Uh, uh, an informant can tell me, hey, they're selling, this is a dope house. Let me just give you that example. It doesn't mean that I immediately open up a case and start documenting everything on it. I'll do a little bit of homework. Let's find out if it is. And then at some point, if you move on with the investigation, then you would you would generate a, a, a report. But in the beginning of it, um, uh, no, not, not I, I, I've had some cases where I wouldn't generate one immediately. There's nothing that says that you have to, if you're looking at something, you know, document that with a case number. Does that does that make sense? Some of them are inquiries. Some of them are um, I, uh, some of them are hunches that we have. Yeah, no, that, that's great. So if you had a hunch, or maybe somebody came and gave you a tip, you might or might not begin investigating it. But at that moment, you would not have started a case. You wouldn't have created a police report and generated a case number. Correct. If you continue past that and you conduct a criminal investigation, would you pull a police report and would there be a case number generated? Depending on the case, yes. Okay. I, I'm trying, is there any scenario where you would conduct a criminal investigation that was ongoing for more than a year and not pull a police report or a case number? Objective form. All right, Dr. McDonough, we're, I've given you a bunch of leeway here in terms of getting into the stuff regarding the existence of records and whether reports would exist. But now you're, I know you're speaking in generalities, but I think you're getting into the areas that are relevant to your pending case in the Southern District uh, regarding uh, things that, that you believe should or should not have occurred with respect to certain investigations. Um, so I think you've been given a lot of leeway here. If you want to stick to the general records questions, that's fine. But now if you're going to get into questions about what should happen with respect to more specifics regarding investigations that, that mirror uh, your claims, we're not we're not going to go uh, down that path today, and, and and you're not entitled to free discovery in this case relate to um, your pending case in the Southern District. Again, as, as I told you yesterday, Mr. Zeskind, I'm not using this deposition for free discovery in the other case. 
my attorney in that case will do whatever discovery that he needs. Obviously, that case relates to an investigation that was done on me. I filed a records request about that investigation. These questions are going to necessarily, at some point, some of them will dovetail, but it's not for discovery in that case. They're absolutely related to me trying to determine if there's records that are responsive and if the city lawfully complied with the records law in my request. You have not filed a motion for protective order to restrict or reduce my discovery. If you have an objection for privilege, I'm happy for you to make it and instruct the witness not to answer. Other than that, if you have an objection to form, you can say objection to form and we can move along, sir. If we have you're going to dig into I'm the happy issues to make this in front of the judge, sir. Exactly. If you're going to dig into issues relating to the other case, then we'll certify those questions and the judge can weigh in on whether you get free discovery here related to your pending federal case. If that's what you're going to do, we'll be in front of the judge and that's your prerogative, sir. But um, I understand your objection and it's noted. So if you could stop interrupting and having these multi long discussions about what your objections are, I get it. You object to form. We're great. Um, or I'll object and we'll certify questions. If you can stick to the public records issues, then it'll move a lot more smoothly. If you would stop interfering in my deposition and coaching the witnesses, it would move much more smoothly, sir. And no witness coaching. I've made an objection based on the scope of your questions and you're going outside what could even possibly lead to the discovery of admissible evidence in your that, that, pending that, that public your records opinion, cases. Sir, that is not my opinion. You, you don't have a right to dictate on what I think is relevant to the case, sir. If you want to certify a question, you can certify a question and we'll bring it in front I did. of the judge. I did. Okay. Captain Rivera, uh, Captain Morales, do officers or detectives or administrative staff have an option to bypass the central records and store their own reports away from the published custodial requirements of the department? Check the form. You're going to have to be a little bit more specific than that. Okay. Um, our police personnel, do they have an option? Are they allowed to bypass the central records and store their reports away from the published custodial requirements of the department? Meaning, can you generate a police report and just keep that in your desk or keep that on your laptop without putting it into the records management system? Form. Yeah. You can yeah, answer. I've answered that already. Yes, you can. In certain instances, you can. Okay. A, a police report or a case number, you could get that and keep that out of the system? Form. Yes. It, again, it's the same question. Yes, you can. In certain instances, yes, you can. Okay. Can you explain how the records department can track criminal cases if an officer detective creates and stores the records outside of the normal system? Deck to form, not clear what records department is. Whether it be the clerk's office or whoever deals with public records in the Homestead Police Department. Form. Yeah, I'm not sure I understand what you're asking. Are you asking a specific person or in general? In general. All right. I think that what you're asking is if any person has access to them. Um, so I filed a records request and, and, and I believe there's records that are in existence. And I believe not all the records have been given to me because I don't believe the records were held in the central system in the RMS records management system. So if a officer was to generate things that were public records related to a criminal investigation and they were not put into the records management system, do you have any idea how the records custodian could find those records? Or would what what record are you talking about? Objective form. Just generally. But that, that's, Name that's objective. The, there, there's no general. You, you have to be specific with what form. Are there instances? Um, yeah, I, I mean, uh, th there can be. Um, well, I'm, I'm not saying depending, I'm not depending saying on what on what the investigation is. Let, let me rephrase this. I'm not saying are there instances where they keep things out of the records management system. I'm saying if they have public records and they have not put them into the records management system, 
how would those records be found by the person who is retrieving public records? How do they even not know if, about? Not if they're already not if they're already public records. Well, it can be a public record before it gets put into the records management system. What, what what's, the, what, what's the so question? For, for yeah. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you a specific example. Thank you. Um, there was a report done on me. Okay. Man, former manager George Gretzis had a copy of that report in a flash drive. That report was generated by Ricky Rivera. When Ricky Rivera gave that report to George Gretzis, that was meant to perpetuate, communicate, or formalize knowledge. That became a public record. But I don't believe that report is in the records management system. All right, object to form, and now we're getting into, again, that's an issue that is specifically at issue it's in the pending issue, Southern District if, case. If I have not gotten the records, I believe they exist. If, that's why it's at issue, did, that's why it's relevant, sir. Did you receive that report? I received some reports from Homestead, but there's other parts of the report that I know that I got from the flash drive that Homestead has not given me that are responsive to my requests. That's why I'm asking these questions, sir. All right, I'm just being clear that if you get into... To, I, I, issues I specific. I sir. You're, you're getting into. Let me just finish. Let me finish my my statement. If you're getting into issues specific to uh, Mr. Gretzis and and issues related to what he may I'm, or may I'm not have not, done I'm or provided, he's represented by example, counsel. So let me just, let me this, let me finish my. I objection. can't. This, sir. I can't. You, no, no, sir. Guys. No, sir. Yesterday, sir. You kept doing that and saying I was asking about another case when I was asking clear questions about records that had not been given to me. This is on the record, sir. We can take this in front of the judge and we can take it to the bar if you want to keep this up, sir. Mr. Gretzis is represented by counsel in another I'm case. Not if you're going to ask Gretzis any questions, you're asking questions though about your claims against him in another case. I want to make clear he's represented by counsel and that that counsel is not present here. So, so I understand fine. if you want to ask questions about the existence of records. That's relevant to the public records case. If you're going to get into issues uh, for the Southern District case, then we can bring it to the judge and he can rule on whether you get to ask those questions in this case. Are you even paying attention to what's going on, sir? Seriously. I, I gave him a specific example so he could understand where I was going. I didn't ask him a question about George Gretzis. Look, just because I'm a pro say you shouldn't abuse me. Sorry about that, Captain Morales. All right, just, just so that you guys are aware, I have a 12.30 appointment that I have to make. Okay, uh, I, I understand, and I'm okay. trying to move as fast as possible. Uh, okay. Mr. Zeskind keeps interrupting this. Half the time it's been him talking about things we already know. So if he continues to interrupt and we have to go past 12.30, I understand you'll have to leave. I'm going to have to call you back. I don't want to do that, Mr. Okay. Morales, but if that's what your attorney forces me to do, that's what he forces me to do. Is there a scenario when it's appropriate for a criminal investigation to be completed without using the public records, the police records management system? Not just start, yes. but complete it. You can complete a criminal investigation and never enter it into the records management system. Uh, I wouldn't say never. Could you think of some scenarios on which it would be proper to conduct a complete criminal investigation? I, I, would have to be, I would have to be extremely general, and I don't think you want that. It would, like, um, it would have to be, um, fine, sir. Um, you know, uh, a narcotics case where it involves a uh, serious amount of informants and um, it's very sensitive in nature. That, that wouldn't be put into the records management system right away. Not right away, but it would be put into the records management system. Or, or would it be put into the records management system even if it was fired wall off so everybody else couldn't see it? I'm not sure. I mean, I, I can tell you I've worked cases where they've been extremely sensitive in, in nature. Um, you know, um, and I can generalize, you know, with the, with the federal government or task force or, or, or large amount of kilo cases and things like that that, that I, I wouldn't have put into any system um, because I wouldn't want that information to get out in any way, shape, or form. It is, does that answer your question? And, and would that be the case even after the investigation was completed? It would probably be that case till it went into court and maybe after court and in even some cases, depending on what happens in court. 
um, we wouldn't because you know you'll you'll have and and and, and again this is this is very general so I'm I'm being honest with you. Yeah, I, I um, it. It, it would have to be a case where the informants are, are are just giving so much information and usually sometimes even after trial they decide to flip or they decide to do whatever. So the case is ongoing for a very long time. Or there could be other cases that spur off from that, and you don't want to tip them off. It, it, it could be. It could be. So, so l l let's back up a little bit. If you were conducting a criminal investigation, and there were no confidential informants, and there was no sensitive information, and you conducted this investigation for more than a year, you sent out official letters, you sent dozens of emails, uh, including to federal law enforcement officers, when you completed that investigation, I mean, at some point during that investigation or after the investigation we completed, that would be entered into the record management system. Would that be correct? Objective. Um, um, not, not necessarily. I, 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 I think, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm sure you will, um, you're talking about a specific case. Um, you're asking me if I would. Oh, I'm um, asking it you would, if... Your understanding is a supervisor in IA. Do you believe that's required? Um, it all depends. To form and, and, and again, if you want to ask him about the existence of records and whether or not certain records exist that are responsive to your subject public records requests, then those are the appropriate questions you're, you're asking him. You just ask him as, you, as a supervisor of IA whether something should have been done when you're clearly referring to an investigation that is the subject of your pending case in the Southern District against the witness that you had yesterday. So uh, again, Mr. Zeskine, I'm trying to find out if we'll there's any that response to documents that remain unproduced. So ask those questions. I'm asking policy questions so I can understand how the policy. You're, works before a, I you're asking back. whether or not it was a. Pro you're asking whether or not he thinks, as a supervisor someone else should have entered records into the records management system. You're not asking him whether or not records exist. So <laughs> you're, you're asking him to, to weigh well, in well, on and give his opinion his, whether based, something... Based on his answer, sir, we can begin to determine or guess if there would be records that still exist that have been unproduced. I, I disagree. Um, so, I think anyway, you're asking let's, let's him to on. give his let's opinion about let's move pending on. case. Captain Morales, um, you mentioned the word inquiry. Can you explain how departmental inquiry works related to an investigation? Well, I call it, I, I was clear, I call it an inquiry. So, um, and remember, I used a couple of examples, inquiry, a hunch, um, you know, you receive information, you know, that type of thing. Is that what you're referring to? I've never heard this word inquiry before until it was said yesterday by Detective Rivera. You said it today okay. and you wrote that word on response to this records request. Okay. So uh, that's the word I inquiry use. Is. Uh, inquiry is looking into something. That's my, that's what I believe it is. Okay. And inquiry is, uh, you know, you, somebody gives you information, you look, in, you look into it and you inquire. Um, you know, you ask questions, you go out on the streets, you ask questions of people, see if something develops. Does that make sense? Okay. And is an inquiry handled the same as a non-criminal police report? I would imagine so. Okay. In the case of a non-criminal police report or inquiry, do those reports require a case number to be entered to the police record system for tracking? Um, I believe so. Okay. If I were to enter it into the system. Is there any legitimate reason for an officer not to use the police department records management system to manage a criminal investigative report? Uh, yeah, I, I think we went through this. It all depends on on the sensitivity of the case. But if let's let's ignore sensitivity in major drug cases with confidential informants that get killed, because that's not the situation we're in here. Um, if, if you were just doing, oh, I'm trying to understand what situation you're you're referring to so if there's a specific situation tell me because uh, I'm 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 not, and I'm not trying to you know yeah, um, no, beat no. around the bush here I'm just being general because I'm I'm being asked general questions no I I, I completely understand let me see okay. if I can um, 
One second. Let me let me find a document real quick. Okay. Again, I'm not trying to be difficult. I'm just I, I want to be able to ask your question. Kathy Morales, you you've been absolutely great. You, you so far you've been the be the nicest person I've deposed. I have no issues with you. Um, let's see here. Is this it? Okay. Give me just a second and I'll share this with you. We can call this Exhibit 1. Can, can you see this document, sir? Yeah, I, uh, I see. I, I'll zoom out so you can see the whole document. Oh, okay, okay. I can't control it from here, right? No, you can't. Oh, I have oh, okay. to control it. So this is the whole right. document. This was a letter that was sent to the federal government by Detective Rivera. Okay. And I want to zoom in here. Let me so make this easy for you to see. Can you see that? Okay, you're not being your vision's not blocked. It, go, go, go up a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Bring the thing down, up or down. You know what I mean. I want to look. There you go. Right there. Stop all right, right there. All right. So here's what I'm going to look at. Right here, this paragraph. Okay. It says the Homestead Police Department is conducting a criminal investigation on James Eric McDonough. I'm officially requesting any and all material and information on James Eric McDonough and to include personnel file, disciplinary files, and any information retrieved, blah, 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 blah. I don't need to read the rest of it. Okay. If you look, you can see the two here. This was sent to Greg Seven, who's a special agent for the U.S. Department of Commerce, Office of Inspector General, Office of Investigation. This is okay. a letter sent on official Homestead Police Department letterhead to a federal law enforcement officer stating that I'm um, under criminal investigation and filing an official FOIA with the United States government. At this point in a criminal investigation, which should there be a case number? Or should there be Object a witness with a case number? Object to form, and if you're going <laughs> to... You haven't established that the witness has personal knowledge of this. He wasn't even in his current role back when this letter was sent in November... 2016 if you're asking for his opinion he's not he, here as an expert he witness he's not example. here to provide a specific example sir he's not here to provide his opinion testimony though he's a fact witness if you have if he, he can testify as to facts within his personal knowledge you're asking him for his opinion you, whether or not something noted. your objection is you're noted. asking you for his question. opinion as to whether or not something should have been done and he's not here as an expert witness he's a fact witness you have not established his personal knowledge of this you haven't asked him for for a factual response you've just asked him for his opinion he's, he's not going to provide IA, opinion, sir he is an expert on how the policies go he's, he's here as a fact he has training on how records requests go he's so here as a fact my question he's here as a fact witness he's not going to answer opinion questions he's not an you expert can answer the question witness. or you can certify or you can plead the fifth your objection is noted sir he still has if to answer asking, the question if you're asking for his opinion about whether or not something should have been done, then yes, we are going to certify. Okay, I'm going to ask the question, and if you want to certify, we can bring you in front of a judge. I don't care. Based That's on what, what you're seeing what here and what I've shown you, in this situation, would you believe there's any legitimate reason an officer would not use the police department records management system to manage the criminal investigative report? Same objection, certify. Are, are you certifying that, Mr. Morales? Yes. Okay. In, in such a situation, how are the proper departmental and state reporting protocols met with something like a Word document? If you did a report on a Word document, how would the department, uh, the proper reporting protocols be met? Section to form. Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure I understand. What do you mean by doing it on Word? And if if you can, if you can, um, I guess dummy it up for me. Um, what do you mean by doing it in Word? And so, if you write a very lengthy report in a Word document, and you were okay. to give it to somebody else, it's now a public record. If you did not, and so, if you did that, but you did not enter into the record management system. How would the proper departmental and state reporting protocols be met in such a Section situation? Section to form. 
Yeah, you're, you're, I mean, if you're, again, if you're talking about a specific case, I'm not sure. Now, if you're asking me what, what I would do, um, what I usually do is I'll write it on Word, make sure spell is good and grammar is good, everything is good, and I'll copy and paste it into the report management system. That's what I would do. And that's what I've done in the past. Is that what you're asking? Close. So if you write your report in Word and then you send it off to other people, but you never put it into a record management system, how would the proper departmental and state reporting protocols be met? Or okay, would they the form. form. Okay, you, you would have to ask whoever wrote that. There might be a, and I'm guessing again, that, you know, this is the, the, the problem with general questions, uh, and I apologize, but um, I guess you would have to ask them. There might be a case where um, it is so sensitive that you don't want to do it and you want to at least uh, memorialize it in a Word document, again, I'm guessing, and send it to people. I, I, that's, is that what you're asking? Well, well, in this case, it's not sensitive, and it was created in a Word document. I, I, I don't know. I don't know which, what, what, what you're referring to. So, again, I, I'm just being general. I'm, I'm really trying to answer your question. No, you I know, understand. Um, let, me, let me stop sharing this for a second, and let me see if I can find another document for you real quick. This might right. help out a little bit more. Um, Okay, I got it now. Can you, can you see this, sir? Uh, yes, I can see it. So I, I'm not going to ask you to read or anything. I'll scroll down just a little bit. I mean, this is just the first page of a mini-page document. This was a report that was written on me. Um, okay. There's no report. There's no case number. Um, would this be official police report? Yeah, I, I don't, I, I'm not sure. I don't know the Actually. circumstances in which this person wrote it. Um, I, I, listen, I, I'll give you an example. Um, when I was detached to FBI or DEA or whatever, you know, and we would write, I, I would write something similar to this. You know, I'd write a Word document uh, based on what I have found at the moment. Um, it could be seeking assistance. It could be um, anything from, hey, I'm advising you guys, this is what's going on. So again, um, you would have to ask whoever wrote this what the reason is. I, 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 I couldn't even begin to guess, uh, but could there be a circumstances where something like this would have been written? And I'm only looking at between number one and, yeah. and number one, I guess. Uh, that's all I can see. Um, I, I, I don't have a specific... Uh, um, answer for you in regards to this particular document. I haven't even seen the uh, entire I'm document or what is involved. And, 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 and I am trying to pick your brain a little bit based on your... No, I, I, and and listen, I am a IA person. So let, let me... Yeah, and, and I understand. And again, as an IA person, I have to I have to also keep in mind there's a wide range of, 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 of things that happen and I have to look at the entirety of it and then make a decision. Correct? You would agree? I, I would hope so. so here, I'm, I'm only getting bits and pieces, and you're asking me for my opinion as a as a, as a supervisor, and, and I don't. I, I, I all I can see is a couple words of this. You, you would really probably get more, I guess, by asking the person who originated it and why. Are there circumstances? Yes. I, I, can, I can show you more of this report, but if I just showed you a couple hundred pages of this, would that mean anything additional to you? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what this case involved. I don't know what the whole entire case was about. Well, so whether this person was giving this to somebody who, who was it, was it a, um, uh, a, for example, a status on a case. I've done that before with the FBI. I'll write something on Word as far as a status and outline a couple things. Yeah, um, and, and I provide them. I don't, I don't know. Hold on. Hold on one second. I, I'm not sure. Um, where you're, 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 I think I'm answering your question, um, but I think it's unfair for me to give you my opinion as a supervisor over something that I'm, I, I'm unaware of. Does, does that make yeah. sense? Also, Captain, you, you're, again, you're a fact witness and not uh, an okay. expert witness. So don't, don't give your 
opinion on things. If Dr. McDonough thinks he's entitled to ask questions regarding your opinion about how this should have been handled or, or anything specific should have been handled, I'm going to object to those questions and we'll certify those and, and the judge can weigh in on, on, on whether you need to answer questions in your, in your capacity as a supervisor regarding how the, how an investigation or an inquiry was handled. Again, this is a public records case, not a case regarding how an investigation should have been handled. That case is pending in the Southern District of Florida. Uh, this is okay. a public records Captain Morales, this is a public records case. He's correct. He is representing the city. I don't know how he's representing you. You're a non-party witness to this case. You can find he's an employee. He's an employee. He's an employee of the city, and he's being represented advice, today. All you want to, Mr. Morales, but if I have to bring this into court, I'm sorry. I couldn't. I couldn't. I, when you guys talk, I mean, I couldn't. I couldn't understand what you said. It, and I'm sure the court reporter would appreciate it also. Yeah, I appreciate if Mr. Zeskind would stop interrupting me. So, well, in all fairness, it's, it's both of you. So let's let's get some order here. Time is running, and I really would like to finish. I'm I'm here. I'll answer your questions, but uh, you know. Um, I'm trying to answer it, but in this case here, in this form that you're showing me, it's really general, and I, I can't I, I give you. A and, and you're working with me. You're being great. I'll, I'll rephrase and I'll help walk you through this. What I want to make you aware of, because I don't want to trick you, I don't want to blindside you. You're okay, I appreciate that. Witness in the case, if you follow Seskind's advice, and I have to take this to court on a motion to compel. And the judge finds you should answer the questions. I'm going to seek sanctions, which you could be personally responsible for. I just want you to know that. I'm not making any threat. Just want you to know that Mr. Zeskind might be walking you down a bad path. So you might. He's an employee. He, Captain Morales, is a city employee. He's being represented by counsel today at this deposition. Just want you to know that you're a non-party witness, and if I have to do a motion to compel, you could possibly get sanctioned. That's want you to know that. That's all. I'm not an attorney, so you seek legal advice from someone else. Okay. So uh, he's in his he's here in his capacity as as a captain. As a captain of IA who today. is an expert on IA and certain procedures. So anyway, let's move along. Captain Morales, I had showed you a letter that was written by Detective Rivera stating there was a criminal investigation being conducted on me. This page I'm showing you here is the report that allegedly goes to that investigation. There's no sensitive information here. There's no confidential informants. There's no major drug bust. There's no IA investigation. Should there be a, a number tracking this report? All right, um, this, I'm gonna make this very simple. I am unaware of this case. I can't comment on a case that I'm unaware of. I don't know if there should or there shouldn't. Are there circumstances where there have not? Yes. So my answer to this question is I can't answer this question. Okay. I, I appreciate that. That's fair enough, sir. Okay. I, I, right. Like I said, I, I have no animosity towards you. Um, in the case of a non-criminal police report or inquiry, do those reports require a case number to be entered into the public record? I'm sorry, I already asked that one. So, yeah. Let me skip along. Do you know who the custodian of records or the person charged with the legal guardianship of criminal investigative reports for the Homestead Police Department is? Um, I would believe that would be Paula Carbonosa. She's the custodian of records and... Well, I, I think that the custodian of records is an overall thing by... Um, Elizabeth Sewell, I believe. Um, I'm not sure if there's a custodian of records here in the department. Okay, that's what I think. I think it's a city. Sewell is the city clerk. Is the custodian of records right. for the city of Homestead? I, I get that. Right. I, I didn't know if there was a specific mm -hmm. custodian of records for the, the police department itself. If, if you're not aware, it's fine. But I don't. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not aware. I, I'm going to. I'm not. I'm, I'm not aware. I'm not going to guess. Yeah, no, no. That, that's. I, 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 I did not want you to guess. I appreciate that, sir. Um. So, I mean, we've gone over this a little bit. I guess I skipped for a little bit. Captain, your office conducted a criminal investigation into my wife and I in November 2016. Are you aware of that case? My office? The yeah, check the form. I, I guess I'm calling the... 
I should have said the department, not office. I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, I'm I'm on. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, is my understanding correct that the police department handles non-criminal reports the same way as a criminal report, meaning a case number is generated and electronic report submitted to the record system? Check the form asked and answered. Okay. Yesterday, uh, Detective Rivera acknowledged the criminal investigation, but then he later changed and said it was an inquiry. Could you please explain the difference between a criminal investigation and a criminal inquiry and how the reporting standard is different for the two? Check to form mischaracterizes his testimony. You can answer if you can. Yeah, I think we already went um, through this. You asked me what is an inquiry, um, a hunch, you know, something like that. Um, an official investigation, I, I would have. I mean, I believe it's an official investigation. You, are you talking about the documentation? I was asking, is the reporting standard different for a criminal investigation versus a criminal inquiry? I would, I would say so. Okay, that's, that's, that's all I was asking. Is there a departmental tracking number, um, such as a case number or event number that coincides with a criminal inquiry? No, we, we've already okay. been through that. No, no. It, it, it now keep in mind, you're calling it a criminal inquiry. Um, I mean, I don't know where the, the criminal inquiry came from. An inquiry could be non-criminal, could be it could be a hunch. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be criminal. So I don't want to label it as a as a criminal inquiry. Those aren't my words. Okay, no, that, that's fair enough. And, and okay, l let me apologize. I, I have a list of questions I'm trying to go down, and I'm trying to follow that. But I I, I understand but, that. But based on some responses or whatever, you know it might pop a follow up in my head that I already had written down for later. So if I repeat, I apologize. Some of these aren't. Don't worry about it. They I, sound. I'm not worried about it. I'll let you know. Okay, no, I'll hey, remind you. You're being great. Some of these right. might sound like repeats, just rephrased, but they're actually a little bit different. Like this last one I just right. asked, I was asking if there was a different standard. Um, I got you. You're doing great. Um, let me. Let me pull up a document real quick. Can, can you see this, sir? I'll make it small so you can see the whole document. Yes. Okay. No, no that's too That's too small. I just want you to be able to see the whole document. I'm, I'm going to blow it up for you. Okay. So this is a checklist that was sent to me on this records request we're talking about now. And that's your yes. name and signature at the bottom. You prepared this, correct? Yes. Okay. Well, it goes along with the records. It, 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 exactly. Whenever I get a records yeah. request where records have come from home to the police department, I normally have this checklist with my records. And at the top, you wrote pending inquiry documents. Okay, keep in mind, this isn't a document that's that's prepared per se by me. Um, there's there's many documents that would come from many agencies, many offices that already pre-prepared. It doesn't mean that I prepared it. It means that if you look on, if you can go, can you go up, uh, up, uh, whatever you call sure, it. Sure, sure. Uh, I, I want to see. Is that the right way or the other way? No, no, the other way. I'm okay, sorry. All right, okay. All right, to where my signature is. If, if you notice, it just says, um, if you have any questions, please contact me. Um, so this is something that's that's done by our public records clerks and our public records people. They fill it out. They put what was done. And if you have any questions, please give me a call. Okay. And that signature, is that an electronic signature, not a wedding signature? I'm assuming like this is a... No, it's an electronic, it's an electronic signature. It's, it's on the form. Oh, okay. That makes a lot more sense now. Th th thank yeah. you so much for that. I, I, I think I'm... No, no problem. So... Just because this has your signature on the bottom doesn't mean that you prepared this. Correct. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm having I'm having my Cuban coffee. I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Please, please help yourself. I'm gonna take a sip of water myself. 
Okay. Now, do you know if you prepared this or not, or do you? Do no, you know? I, I know. I know. I did not. You know, you did not. Okay. All right. Then that can skip past that, and that becomes irrelevant. I appreciate that, sir. No problem. Give me just a second. I want, I want to go through a couple of these questions real quick. I don't. I want to make sure I'm not re-asking you questions. Um, Okay, so according to the documents I've been provided, I was under a criminal investigation. Would it be the policy and practice of the department to complete an offense incident report identifying the crime along with the location and other pertinent information as required by the state? Check the form. Yeah, I, I believe we've already been through this. Um, the, the, the general answer would be yes. Okay. The, the in parentheses would be depending on the case. Yes, yes, qualified. That, that's great. That, that's perfect. Um, now, if there was a report, would that include the state required information relating to my case that should have been reported as part of UCR requirements? Yeah, to form. Um, yeah, again, yes, in parentheses, depending on the case. Th that, that's fine. <laughs> Does the Homestead Police Department maintain case statuses for criminal investigations? What do you mean by case statuses? Like pending, cleared. In 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 some cases, uh, I I I did come across that a lot when I worked with the general investigative unit. In, in other words, a robbery, a uh, um, a fraud. You know, uh, certain cases depending on 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 what. Again, it depends on what the detective is is working on. I got you. The reason I ask is I've seen things where it's like investigation cleared or closed by arrest, things like that. So, right, right. Okay. Is there a report, to your knowledge, that would be available that would tell me the official status of a criminal investigation related to me? Or anyway, I Say that again? Is there a report or a document or something available that would tell me the official status of a criminal investigation relating to me? You mean sent to you? Is that what you're asking? So, in this case, Rivera admits he was conducting a criminal investigation on me. Would there be any document, record, report, anything that would state what the status of that investigation was? Section to form. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. You would have to ask him. I, I, okay. In, in some cases, I have in different cases. In some cases, I haven't. So, you, you would have to ask him. I'm sorry. Okay. If there was a criminal investigation and the case was closed, should a full report be available in central records or in the custody of the department records custodian? Check Depending on the answer. Okay. And, and I'm assuming that you have no reason or idea or fact for why none of the documents that I received in my request have, uh, um, for the investigation, have a case number associated with them? Say that again? Right, let me rephrase this. Is, is there any reason you can think of or provide as to why none of the documents I have received in my records request for all records related to any investigation done on me by Ricky Rivera have a case number associated with them? Uh, um. You're asking me my opinion? I, I don't know. I, I, you would have figured, to ask him. I figured him. you wouldn't ask it. I, just, I had to ask. I, I figured you no, no, no. I, I, I get it. I get it. Um, if there's records made in an investigation and not a sensitive investigation or a drug investigation or anything like that, um, but the reports and the documents, even though they are public record, we're going to assume they're public record, have not been put into the record system. Is there any way that they can be found or tracked if they're not put into the system? Objection to form. Yeah, you, you lost me there. Can, can you repeat that a little, or be a little bit more specific? Um, I'm, I'm, let me think about how to rephrase this for a second. Uh, The, 
the question's kind of general, but I'll try to make a specific example so it makes okay. it a little bit more elucidated. So in, in this case, again, there was a criminal investigation and there was a major report generated by that investigation. If that report was not put into the records management system, which it appears it has not been, how would such records be found in a request for public records? Section of form. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that one. Okay. All right. No, I, I appreciate your honesty and your candor, sir. All right, we're, we're going to skip gears a little bit here. Um. Is an officer with extensive supervisory experience, are you familiar with the funeral or bereavement leave policy? Section um, four. Are you are you talking about a specific incident or are you talking about just general, in general? The, the funeral or bereavement leave policy for police officers when a family member dies? Right. No, I, I understand I understand what it is. I, I understand what it is. Um uh, in general, yes. To, to the best of your understanding and knowledge, could you explain the funeral or bereavement leave policy? Um, I guess in, in, in layman's term, I'll, 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 I'll do it that way. If uh, God forbid, I'm sorry, I'm knocking on wood, something were to happen in my family. Oh, I, would God, I, 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 my, I wish that on no one. I, yeah, I, 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 I would contact my supervisor, advise them what's going on. Um, the supervisor will then contact our payroll person, let them know um, what's going on, and I'm placed on, on bereavement leave. And would you state the relation of the deceased? Well, it all depends who the deceased is, right? Is okay. that what you're asking? I, mean, I guess what I mean is, would an officer go, hey, a family member died, or they go, hey, my mother died, or my son died, or my aunt died? Like the relation of the deceased person. Yeah, I, would, yeah, I wouldn't be able to even begin to guess how somebody would pass that news along. Uh, like I said, thank God it's never happened to me. Um, and to be honest with you, I've never had anyone in my supervision advise me of that. Um, so um, I, I, I'm only guessing here. Uh, I would hope that they would give me specifics, but they, they don't. I don't think. Personally, I don't think it would be appropriate for me to ask who, what, why, when, and where in, at such a time. Does that make sense, what I'm telling you? I think it makes sense. So, uh, to clarify, neither when you were an officer nor when you were a supervisor, have you ever had to apply for funeral leave or had to grant it for a subordinate? Correct. Oh, okay. All right. That, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, so, I'm going to ask some questions and hopefully... And hopefully it doesn't happen. Pardon? And hopefully it doesn't happen. I wish no ill will on anybody. Um, I've had a lot of family members I've lost recently, and it's not a good thing. Um, to your knowledge, when an officer takes funeral or bereavement leave, is there a form that states the relation of the deceased to the officer? No, That's not to my knowledge. I mean, um, not to my knowledge. Okay. Do you know who might be able to answer questions related to this? HR, maybe? HR? Um, I'm sorry, human resources. You, you, I, I, I understand uh, human resources. I meant, do, is there anybody in the police department that you think would be able to answer this? Maybe under Captain Garland Wright, Dijon? Well, that's, that's, that's who I would call. I would call human resources to find out um, since it's never happened to me. Um, it's one of those things, you know, I, I, I know I've, I've read up on the entire policies, but uh, I'm sure you can't expect me to remember each portion of it. No, so no. If, it were, if, if it were to happen to me, um, I would definitely reach out to HR and ask for the correct uh, way to do it, I guess. And, and let me just state, I'm happy you never had to use that policy, and I pray you yeah. never have to, sir. Um, well, law of the land says otherwise, but oh well. You know, the side effect of living is death. Yep. Um, so you don't know if there's a form that's required to be filled out? Um, like I said, there may or may not be. I have not been posed with that, that, that situation. Um, there's many situations where, you know, it's kind of like a play-by-ear thing. You know, it, it, especially when, when you become a supervisor, there's so many things that, that happen that, you tend to, you know, um, 
as soon as they, they, they come to your radar, then you start doing it and repetition makes makes perfection. But in this particular case, it hasn't happened to me. So I'm, I'm being honest with you yeah. and saying that's not something that uh, fortunately I have not been able to have not had to handle at this point. But if it were, I can tell you that I would call human resources and ask them what would be the procedure for me to put this person on leave or whatnot or, or how it works. That, that makes sense. I, I, I appreciate that. Like I said, if you don't know, I didn't want you to guess or speculate. Um, that, okay. that, that's, that's absolutely fine. Um, hmm. All right, at this point, uh, Captain, I, I think I got the questions that I needed for two of the cases. Um, that would be 19.06869 and 19.35962. Um, cases 17.017515 and 19.034861, I didn't get the questions to. I don't think I'm going to need to ask you questions for that. I think I can get around it without having to call you back. Um, but I might have to, if I can't get it another way, I might have to call you back for those two. I, I just want to give you a heads up because I didn't want to blindside you or anything. I'm going to do everything in my power not to have to call you back for that. I don't believe I will. That's okay. Part of my job. Um, is, uh, is there any part of your testimony you've given today which you wish to retract, correct, or modify, sir? No, sir. Well, again, Captain, I, I really appreciate your candor. I, I appreciate your demeanor. You treat me with a lot of respect. That it means a whole lot to me, and um, I, I thank you again, and I have no further questions for you. All right. Thank you, everybody. The witness will read? Yes. Okay. And I will order, but I don't need this one rushed. Okay. We'll get a copy then as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much.